Today we delve into the intriguing tale of Pizarro's betrayal in the Egghead arc of One Piece, a topic that's been stirring up quite the buzz among fans in Japan. Kizaru, in a surprising twist, may turn against the Marines during the Egghead arc, potentially saving the Straw Hat crew and Vegapunk. His actions are significantly influenced by the evil deeds of Saint Saturn, playing a pivotal role in spurring his betrayal. The outcome of the Egghead incident is poised to shock not just the world of One Piece, but also its audience, in ways you might never expect. We'll be breaking down these popular theories from Japan in a straightforward and comprehensible manner, so make sure to stay tuned till the end. If Kizaru's betrayal took you by surprise, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear your thoughts on Kizaru's sense of justice in the comments. Now, let's get into the details. In this episode, we're diving deep into the possibility of Kizaru's betrayal of the government in the Egghead arc of One Piece and the shock it would bring to the world. In episode 1078, the narration teases us with a shock that will surprise the world. Although this phrase alone doesn't confirm Kizaru's betrayal, it opens the door to numerous speculations. First off, let's consider the shock being referred to here. What comes to mind when you hear a shock to the world? Characters like Luffy and Robin in the Straw Hat crew possess knowledge about a colossal kingdom. It's entirely possible that these characters could be captured by the government. The government seems keen on keeping this kingdom's information under wraps. However, this would be more of a shock to the readers, not necessarily an unforeseen shock within the world of One Piece. Remember, from a civilian's perspective, Luffy and his crew are pirates and the bad guys who should be captured. While the Navy has its fair share of villains and, despite the Straw Hats often being the real saviors, they are not generally viewed as the good guys. Some citizens perceive Luffy as a giant, nefarious figure. With a massive bounty of 30 billion, to the uninformed, they are major criminals. Therefore, even if the Straw Hats were captured by the government in Egghead, it wouldn't constitute an unforeseen shock to the world or its citizens. Rather, it would likely be seen as good news that notorious villains have been apprehended. Let's start by acknowledging that this is purely speculative, but it seems unlikely that the story will end with Luffy and his crew being captured or defeated. So if we think in reverse of the unforeseen shock to the world, it suggests something significant happening on the side of the Navy or the world government, which the public perceives as the side of justice. This shock likely implies an outcome that could disrupt the world's balance. The three major forces maintaining this balance are the Navy admirals, the Four Emperors and the Clone Seraphims, who possess the strength of the Seven Warlords, plus more. The Seraphims combine the original strength of the Seven Warlords with the abilities of Devil Fruits and the toughness of the Lunarian race. Focusing on Egghead, where Luffy, one of the Four Emperors, is present, our earlier analysis suggests that nothing significant might happen to them. Thus, the focus of the Egghead arc might shift to the Navy, the righteous force protecting the world from the so-called evil of pirates, particularly something happening to its top brass, the admirals. For instance, if news breaks that Kizaru has defected to the pirates or that his defeat has led to the collapse of these three major forces, it would indeed send a tremendous shock throughout the world. Another possibility involves something happening to Saint Saturn, one of the most powerful of the five elders. If one of the rarely seen five elders were to be defeated by pirates in the lower world, or if a navy admiral betrays and opposes the five elders, it would certainly create a massive shock. In real world terms, it's akin to the police siding with criminals, news impactful enough to plunge the world into chaos. The outcome of the Egghead incident could have a profound impact on the world. Now let's discuss the second reason why Kizaru might be considered a traitor. We'll delve into the conversation between Kuma and Saint Saturn in episode 1100. This conversation focused on Kuma being transformed into a human weapon, losing his self-awareness and becoming a tool for the government. Crucially, the scene where Kuma was offered to keep Bonnie under government surveillance for two years stands out. This was more of a threat than a negotiation, using Bonnie as leverage to force Kuma into cybernetic transformation. If Kuma refused to become a cyborg or lose his self-awareness, Bonnie couldn't be saved. On the other hand, to save Bonnie, he had to give up his self and become a cyborg, essentially sacrificing his humanity 
for his daughter's life. While intriguing, here is why Saint Saturn was aware of Kuma's relationship with Vegapunk and why he initiated this negotiation. It's likely that Kizaru reported this information to Saint Saturn. Observing the interaction between Vegapunk and Kizaru, Vegapunk commented, I don't dislike that aspect of you. This suggests that Kizaru or the Navy detected Vegapunk's contact with Kuma and reported it to Saint Saturn. Kizaru mentioned to Vegapunk, You didn't know every corner of this lab, and in episode 1099, eavesdropping transponder snail were depicted. It seems plausible that the Navy first caught the conversation between Kuma and Vegapunk and then relayed it through Kizaru to Saint Saturn. This content gives deeper meaning to Kizaru's later remark, This is my real job. So why is Kizaru considered a likely traitor? The reason lies in his deep connections with the Navy's science division. When young Sentomaru was brought in, Kizaru was with Vegapunk, and Sentomaru later joined the science unit. Given this background, it's not surprising that Kizaru was involved with the science team. Vegapunk even studied Kizaru's laser technology. Moreover, Saint Saturn's role was the science and defense warrior god, overseeing the government's scientific department. It leads us to believe that Kizaru, with his ties to the science team, reported Vegapunk's suspicious activities in Egghead to Saint Saturn. As a result, Vegapunk was extremely angry. The terms laid out for Kuma effectively meant killing him and offering his body as a weapon to the government. Vegapunk furiously questioned, Are you asking me to kill someone? Indicating his belief in the immortality of taking lives. Yet the compassionate Kuma, with tears of joy, accepted this fate to save Bonnie, who was like a daughter to him. In the final scenes of this interaction, Kizaru appeared lost for words at Kuma's brave decision and resolve to protect his daughter, merely looking downwards. Vegapunk's statements were accurate, and witnessing Saint Saturn's extreme negotiation and Kuma's gratitude being stripped away might have blurred the lines of right and wrong for Kizaru. If Kizaru and the Navy hadn't reported the conversation, caught by the bugging transponder snail to Saint Saturn, Kuma and Bonnie might have had a peaceful future ahead. Kizaru might have felt responsible for this outcome. In the current Egghead arc, Kizaru is once again pressuring Vegapunk and Bonnie alongside Saint Saturn. Notably, Bonnie, whom Kuma had risked his life to protect, is now in mortal danger due to Saint Saturn's actions. Kizaru has witnessed both the moment when Kuma was ready to die by Saint Saturn's command and the instance where Bonnie was nearly killed by him. Just imagining such a heart-wrenching scenario is unbearable. To witness the gentle Kuma and his daughter face death twice is incredibly distressing. If Kizaru indeed regrets his past actions, there's a strong possibility that, in the Egghead incident, he might ultimately defy Saint Saturn to save Bonnie and Vegapunk. This could be the moment where Kizaru reevaluates his sense of justice and makes a decisive stand. Considering the current situation, where Luffy is severely drained and Zoro is occupied with Luchi, Kizaru might be the only one capable of stopping Saint Saturn. The third clue pointing to the possibility of Kizaru's betrayal emerges from episode 1100, depicting the life of Kuma and Bonnie in Egghead. In this episode, Kuma agrees to sacrifice his life in exchange for Bonnie's surgery and subsequently spends about half a year living in Egghead. He's involved in the construction of buildings and playing with Sentamaru, all depicted in a very joyous atmosphere. A particularly intriguing scene shows Kizaru and others, in a harmonious mood, enjoying pizza together. This raises questions. Was Kizaru genuinely interested in Bonnie and Kuma's situation, or was he there under the orders of Saint Saturn to monitor them? While it's likely that he was ordered to keep an eye on Kuma to some extent, their shared laughter and pizza eating suggest he might have just been there to observe. Furthermore, it's clear that Saint Saturn had no involvement in this scene. While just sharing pizza could still imply obedience to Saint Saturn's orders, the subsequent events are crucial. Everyone at the scene, including Kizaru, seen only as silhouettes, dances to the rhythm of the Don Dots Dots beat, synonymous with the liberation of Nika. What would happen if Saint Saturn found out about this? Considering the fate of guards who were eliminated merely for mentioning Nika, dancing to the liberation rhythm should have been unthinkable. Yet Kizaru remains unscathed. This leads us to believe that Kizaru came to that place with his own personal feelings and interact with Kuma and Bonnie. In the opening of episode 1100, Kizaru's remark, I was able to work today, 
suggests that he frequented Vegapunk's place even outside of official duties. With an admiral like him around, surveillance would naturally relax. This might have provided them with a rare opportunity to spend time together, free from the constraints of monitoring and their respective roles. Another crucial aspect is the fact that Kizaro was seen dancing to the rhythm of the Liberation Drum. This seems to hold significant meaning. Given this portrayal, it's plausible to think that Kizaro too is looking forward to the resurrection of Nika and eagerly awaits a world turned upside down. This scene could very well be foreshadowing Kizaro's future alliance with Luffy and his crew. In episode 1100, another clue suggesting Kizaro's potential betrayal is presented through the character of Drake. Briefly depicted before the negotiation scene between Kuma and St. Saturn, Drake's appearance, particularly his distinctive jaw scar, leaves no doubt about his identity. This suggests that Drake might have been a subordinate of Kizaro during his time in the Marines, leading to an intriguing scenario. It appears that Marines deeply connected with former admirals Akainu, Ayokiji, and Kizaro are all members of S.W.O.R.D. In Akainu's case, Hibari, rumored to be his daughter due to their distinctive dialect, is part of S.W.O.R.D. As for Aokiji, his junior colleague, Kobe is a member, and now, as revealed, Drake was indeed under Kizaru. This implies that subordinates, juniors, and even those thought to be children of the admirals are part of S.W.O.R.D., creating a compelling dynamic within the organization. If this isn't just a coincidence, it's plausible that the admirals might have secretly recommended personnel for S.W.O.R.D. to advance the future of the Marines and true justice. Becoming an admiral means serving directly under the Celestial Dragons and frequently encountering inhumane situations. Witnessing such scenarios could foster skepticism towards the government. Strategically placing trusted subordinates within S.W.O.R.D. seems like a viable move. If Kizaro did indeed send Drake to S.W.O.R.D., it suggests he might have had intentions of opposing the government. The fact that Drake survived the attack by Kizaro at Savaori Archipelago might indicate that Kizaro was aware of his true identity. However, this alone isn't enough to form a concrete basis, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. The final indication of Kizaro's potential betrayal lies in his motto, Ambiguous Justice. This suggests an unclear, unsettled sense of justice, indicating that Kizaro himself might not have a firm grasp on what's justice and what's evil. His reactions during Kuma's flashback seem to reveal his uncertainty about whether or not he should align with the government or not. The notion of ambiguous implies that there might come a time when Kizaro's sense of justice becomes clear. This could be foreshadowing the possibility of him betraying the government. His actions, like attempting a direct confrontation with Sentamaru and stating he doesn't wish to kill Luffy during their fight, suggest his conflicted feelings. Lately, Kizaro's lines have been uncharacteristically emotional, which is quite a deviation from his usual demeanor. These instances suggest that Kizaro might be regretting past events and has fully recognized the kindness of Kuma and Bonnie. It also indicates the possibility of his growing suspicion towards the government. I speculate that in the final scenes of Egghead, he might find his unwavering sense of justice and help Vegapunk and Luffy's group escape. This could lead to Kizaro being killed by Saint Saturn, or alternatively, Kizaro severely injuring Saint Saturn, sending shockwaves around the world with this news. That's all for today! This channel posts summaries, explanations, and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you in the next video.